Hi everybody, this is Michael Hildebrand and I'm your host on the Sleep Trust Podcast where I'm talking about how to gain back trust in your ability to have a superb sleep again. In this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast, we are going to talk about the law of attraction in regards to sleep. And if you have not heard of the law of attraction before, you might have heard of the movie The Secret that was a big success maybe 10 years from now. I'm not 100% sure. I would have to look that up. But the law of attraction is kind of the underlying principle behind what they teach and told and filmed in the secret. And the way this law works is that simply if you wish something for you to come true, then you just have to think about it and emotionalize it and wish it and believe that you will get it and send that thought out into the universe. And the universe will take care of the rest And the thing will start moving into your direction as soon as you do that. And that sounds to be good good to be true. And it sounds really esoteric. And it is. But there is a reason why I think it's not that esoteric at all. And why I actually uh, believe that this works and can work and help and serve you when it comes to sleep especially. And we'll walk through that step by step. And then you can kind of take your own decision if you want to work with the law of attraction or if you're going to take the other ways. Uh, And this is not a one way or the other because everything plays together. And uh, this is kind of the approach that you could take to boost your faith, your belief and tie everything else around what you're doing to have a superb sleep together. And if you are a religious person, I will say, in my opinion, this is exactly the same thing, uh, except that we're not talking about God. We're replacing it through the universe, because if you set up a prayer, you are doing exactly the same thing. You're wishing something, you're asking for help, and you will be helped, uh, as long as you believe, of course. It's not enough to send out a prayer if you don't believe that you will get the help, you won't. So if you really believe and if you're religious, praying is exactly the same thing for me. It's just kind of uh, uh, the, the flip side of the same coin. But before we dig into the topic and really walk through which steps we want to do if we want that law of attraction to work in our favor, let me please ask you to follow me on Facebook or Instagram if you are not already doing so. You just have to open your app. Hit the pause button right now, open the app, search for at sleep trust, click the follow button. And we are really publishing and bringing up a lot of value to the world when it comes to sleep and how to improve your sleep trust. And other than that, I think it's just super entertaining and uh, a way to get in touch with me. So really join me there. Uh, I hope to see you on, in particular, I love Instagram. I know I said that a couple of times now, but I love it. It's really modern, lightweight. Uh, And we're going to have a survey there at some point in future where you can tell me which podcasts, topics you would wish yourself uh, to come for me to bring up in future. And I'm going to pick them up and and do so. So uh, make sure that you show up there. And now let's just dig into how we can get that law of attraction really working in our favor. And as we're trying to improve our sleep quality, improve our sleep trust, or even just get rid of sleep disorders, um, I'm going to relate everything that we do here to sleep. Just keep in mind that you can use this law for basically anything. If you want a new car, a new job, new house, new relationship, better relationship, whatsoever, you can use the law of attraction in just the same way. So the first step that you want to do is to get clear about what you wish, because the law does not decide if you wish something good or something bad for yourself. It just delivers what you kind of order. Let me give you a little example of what I mean here. So we all know people who are constantly sick, ill, getting catching one flu after the other, and uh, we also know the opposite ones who are constantly healthy, uh, even if they kind of tend to get sick, they never really get sick because they recover super quickly. 
And if you talk to these people, you will experience a complete different mindset. The one person, at least in my experience, and I have talked to kind of a lot of people, will tell you that they are um, ill and they can't do anything about it and it's just how it is and they're going to catch the next flu, you know, in, in a couple of weeks because it's uh, November and they always catch a flu in November and this is kind of the mindset that they've, ha that they've go uh, got going on in their head and accordingly they're going to get what they wish and ask for so they're going to get sick and ill more often. And then you get these other people who are really healthy, who, you know, everybody can catch a flu and does catch a flu or can get sick at, at points in time. And things can happen. That's just how it goes. But these other people just accept this as a blip, a glitch in, the, <laughs> in, in their living. And they know that they will arrive at the point where they're doing uh, good again maybe even better than they were before. And these people tend to recover much faster. They uh, are also more positive, but that's just a side effect. And they do not get sick that often. And this is kind of the law of attraction on a practical side when you just say, okay, what's this? Of course, they're not praying uh, to the universe uh, to, uh, about this, but it's the intention that counts. So if you know and believe you are going to keep healthy, then you're higher likely to really walk through something that could eventually have been a flu if you believe that you are now going to get sick. And this is just how it works. And this is a small example. I picked this one because I think uh, it's an example that hopefully everybody f of us can relate to. We all know people who are like this and this, and we're kind of, you know, it's not the left and the right and the black and the white. We're all kind of somewhere in between. And sometimes it just depends on our mood, the day, the week, what happens around us. But generally speaking, if you have the intention, if you can see that you are going to arrive somewhere, then you eventually are going to arrive right there. And this is how the law of attraction works. So you get a thought in your mind, you wish yourself something. Let's go away from the health a little bit and say you wish yourself a new car. Or, we're a sleep podcast, you wish to have a superb sleep again. So what would you want to do here? First of all, you have to believe and believe to a degree that you know that you will sleep at some point in the future. And this is really key and it's not easy, you know, if you have had sleep issues for quite a while, Sometimes it's it's even been for decades. You're uh, you've tested a lot of stuff. You're taking sleeping pills. Your tablets. You 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 know. You, we all know these stories. And maybe you know if you are suffering uh, over a sleep disorder right now, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And especially if you have experienced this over years, you get a belief burned into your head. You, you kind of have these beliefs because what you experience is what you believe and it does take a serious amount of energy that you have to put into your mindset to really start to believe that you will be a superb sleeper again. But you've got the choice and you can do so. And this is the beginning because uh, I'm not even sure who said that, if it was Einstein or a, a other smart head out there, it doesn't matter if you believe you can do it or not, you're always going to be right. So it starts with believing that you can have a superb sleep again. And then you're going to build up this wish in your mind and you're really going to experience it. You, you have to sit down, close your eyes, relax, maybe do a meditation and see how you are going to be, how it's going to look, how it's going to feel when you have a superb sleep again. How you're going to feel when you wake up how your life is going to be. You're going to put as much emotions and clarity into this picture as possible. And when you do so, you have to start to believe that you will really receive this. And you have to re believe it to a level that it's a given fact for you. You know you've not got it right now. You don't know if you're going to get it tomorrow, the day after, or whenever. But you know you will be there. And this is a point where you really have to watch your body reaction. It's not enough to, you know, I think it's a big misconception out there for people using the law of attraction to say, okay, 
for, for the first, there are two big misconceptions when it comes to the law of attraction. The first is it's not enough to say that you want to have something. You really have to feel that you have to feel it to be confident to a degree that you know you're going to get it at some point, which is really a hard job. It sounds easy. It's not. You have to sit down. You have to visualize. You have to get really clear about your thoughts, how it's going to be. And then you have to stick to this picture and emotion until you really believe it. Hard part number two, you have to let it go. You have to say, okay, I believe I know I'm going to get there and I'm not going to question it anymore. The universe is going to bring it to me. God is going to gift me with it. And that's it for me. That's my job done. And the second misconception is to actually not do anything about that because that's my job done does not mean that, that you don't have to take any action. You will get inspirations of what you can do to achieve this goal. So come back to your sleep disorders. If you see the picture and feel that you will sleep superb again, you're in line with that. You give it to the universe, you hand it over and you know that you will receive it. So your belief is strong. Then you will get inspiration. The universe will come back to you and say, okay, Maybe something's wrong with your body. Maybe you want to get your blood checked from a doctor. It's not enough to sit there and say, okay, that's a great idea. No, actually, you really have to go to a doctor because you just got an inspired thought from the universe, from God, you name it, uh, even from, from yourself, it doesn't matter. And you have to take action on that. So if you get this inspiration, go to a doctor, let your blood get checked and do it quickly. Those inspirations, they come and they go quickly comes to you, you take action, and you're going to move into the direction. The universe is going to bring it to you, but it's kind of this attract. Even when I'm thinking and talking about this to you, attraction, something that attracts each other. So it's not only something pulling, it's also a pushing side to it. Both sides have to do their job. It's not enough to sit there and wait. So this is basically how it works. And in regards to sleep, just start today. Sit down, close your eyes after you listen to this podcast. Visualize and really start to believe that you will be able to sleep good again, to sleep superb, and get clear about how this will look for you. What is a good sleep for you? When will you go to bed? When will you get up? How will you feel the next day? Um, How's your bedroom going to look? How are you going to feel when you lay down? How long is it going to take for you to fall asleep? How deep will your sleep be? All, all kinds of stuff all around sleep. And you're going to get that picture really clear and you're going to feel it. Feel it to a degree uh, that you will really start to believe that this will be the case in future. And then wait for the inspiration to come. Act on it. And uh, that's basically how the law of attraction works. The thing that I have with esoteric approaches is that nobody will really tell you why it's working, why it's not working. And even though I believe the law of attraction works, absolutely, and it has worked for me in uh, several cases, I do think we need to have a look at it through neuroscience and psychology because I feel that these are major drivers to or at least help us to understand what's going on. If you just look at the esoteric side and it doesn't work for you, you will hear something like, you know, you just didn't believe enough and you just didn't let it go or something like that. And it's just hard to get something practical out of that. And I think neuroscience and psychology actually give the answer to what we have to do to get the bring the law of attraction into action that will work out in the end. So let's start with the first thing. We're going to build up this wish in our minds. And what we do there is to draw a picture. So we're visual beings where we can hear stuff. So we want to bring sounds into this picture. And we want to involve as many senses and sensations as possible because the more neurons fire together, the more neurons wire together. And this is how neuroscience works. So you want to get as many neurons in your head involved as possible into this idea. So build it up, bring sounds in, bring colors in, bring movement in, bring uh, emotions in. Of course, emotions are the driver of all of this. We're all emotional beings. 
It doesn't matter how rational we think we are, we're all acting on emotions because emotions are our basically our reward system. If we wouldn't act after we, uh, emotions, we would be robots and we're not. We need a motivation and emotions are our mid motivation. That's part one. And then part two comes in and kicks in when we wish this and think about the thought and the sensation, everything in our mind will start to build up around this. So if we make this to our major thought or one of our major thoughts, then everything we do will kind of work into this direction in our mind. So we're not talking about spirituality here. We're just talking about our brains, physically our brains. If we walk through and think that we will have a superb sleep again and we can see the bedroom and this and that and how we, when we go to bed, what will happen is that actually when we penetrate our brains with this picture, with the emotions, with all of, the, all of these sensations, that when we sit on our sofa, sofa, we will look at the clock and say, okay, mm, it's 9 p.m. now. I have a picture in mind that I should go to bed now. And, you know, these are super tiny steps, but you can imagine that everything around the picture will wrap around to, to work into that direction. If you have a specific picture of your bedroom in your mind and you walk through the supermarket or any other market and you find something that you saw in that picture that will fit in there, you're going to buy it. You're going to get the inspiration to do that. If you feel good and fresh and healthy and you think you should move your body more, you will start to do so. So, and as more action as you take, the more neurons get activated again because you're doing something that will activate different parts in your brain and they're all going to get connected and uh, move your body and your existence into that picture that you had in mind before. And that's why the saying, what you can see in your mind, you can hold in your hand is actually true for me. The neurons, that's the neuroscience. And we've, we've got a psychology aspect too. And this is a thing that, that we really want to watch. In the law of attraction, it's about, you know, you feel it has to feel good when you, when you send it out. You really have to believe it. And that's the point. What happens is from psychology uh, aspect that we, if we imagine something that is so far away. So let's say you've had a sleep disorder for 10 years uh, and it, being a superb sleeper is kind of far away. So if you put this bill, picture into your head and you penetrate your head, um, there are going to be counter beliefs that work against that. And this is the psychology behind it. So this could be for you if you, it, it starts as easy as, oh, if it were, would have been so easy, I would have done that before. Okay. So you're, you're doing something that you don't really believe in that moment that, that it can really work and it's not going to work. So you have to cast these things aside as a sin. Just cast them away and stick to the picture. You have to really change your belief and say, I am able to do this. Uh, there could be other beliefs too. You know, our belief systems are super complex. The key is to listen to what the little voice in your head tells you. And I mean this little nagging negative voice that will tell you why this cannot work. And then you really have to think about why this voice is telling you this and handle it. In most cases, it will simply be enough to say shut up and get that little nagging voice to quiet and then follow through on your belief and your goal. But there are cases where an underlying cause is strong and powerful, a strong belief that will prevent you from reaching your goal because it's going to work against you on an unconscious level. So you will feel this if you have feelings of confusion when you think about your goal and you're not really comfortable uh, in, a, in regards to you don't really believe that you, if you honestly answer that question to yourself, you don't really believe that you will achieve this. Um, then there may be one of these powerful beliefs. And I'm going to make up an example just to give you a feeling what we're looking for here. And this is completely fictional just to give you a feeling. So let's say you are a single mom and you are raising an infant. And now you fell asleep. The little infant woke up, started to cry because it was sick. It had fever and was screaming and screaming. And uh, eventually at some point, much, much later, you woke up 
The little infant was still crying, but, you know, had hardly had a breath. It was completely exhausted. You had to go to a hospital, and it was a really terrible experience. You felt really bad as a mom, as a mother, and you had a, a super big back conscious because you didn't wake up right away and didn't take care of your little child in the manner that you would love to do, would have loved to do. So this could have caused an experience that brought up a belief that you are not allowed to fall asleep that deeply because if you do, you will hurt the person you love most in your life. And this is a very powerful, strong belief because you want to protect your loved ones. You want to protect your little infant, your little baby. And over time, you uh, your sleep wasn't that deep anymore. It wasn't good. And you don't really consciously know why this is the case. So this could be a thing that could come up if you had an experience that is really profound and resulted in a strong belief. And you really want to take care about that if this is the case. So I think that gave you, hopefully gave you a little bit of a feeling how the law of attraction is backed up with neuroscience and psychology. And for those of you who acknowledge that there is some real world stuff going on with the law of attraction like neuroscience and psychology, but are not 100% convinced yet, I highly recommend reading the book Think and Grow Rich from Napoleon Hill. It's almost 100 years old, so there must be something of value in there, otherwise the book would not be around anymore. And Napoleon Hill interviewed the 500 most successful people out there at that time, so no gurus or stuff like that, successful business people, Edison uh, and others, other names you will be familiar with. Um, and he did that for 20 years. So basically he dedicated a really long time of his life to do the research and to write this book. And he came up with a process where he pulled together the success factors that all of these people had in common. And if you read this book, you will find the law of attraction in action. So it's all about getting clear about what you want, penetrating your brain with it, bringing all your emotions in, believing in that you will reach the goal um, and get really practical about it. So really read this book if you are kind of on the more um, practical side. If you're more the spiritual uh, person, you might want to read the book The Law of Attraction from um, the Hicks, Easter and Gary Hicks. And um, then just test it, test pilot. You've got nothing to lose and everything to win is what I, I like to say at uh, this point. And I'm sure that you will pull out out of either books. I read them both and you can pull value out of both. So if you've got a little bit of time left and you think that you really want to improve your sleep, this is a, a major, can be a game changer for you, clearly. So check it out. So let's wrap up this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast together. The law of attraction is an esoteric spiritual law that says that if you imagine wish yourself something and hand this wish over to the universe, that it will deliver the wish on schedule. But remember, you have to take action on the inspiration that the universe will give you. There is support for the law of attraction in the not spiritual sector coming from neuroscience and psychology. And if you are not a super spiritual person, but you want to give the law of attraction a try, really consider getting the book Think and Grow Rich from Napoleon Hill, where he lays out how to get really practical on the law of attraction, even though he doesn't name it so. And that's it for this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast. I hope that you attract that high quality sleep into your life that you deserve and that you tune in next week when we're going to talk about sleep and forgiveness. Until then, have a superb sleep. Hey there, and thanks for listening to the Sleep Trust Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you want to get further information on this podcast or material that will help you to gain back your sleep trust, please check out sleeptrust.eu. That's sleeptrust.eu, where you will get lots of information around sleep. And here comes some legal stuff. 
everything on this podcast is my opinion only, so do not take it as an advice, as I am not a doctor, nor have I considered your personal situation. If you feel that you need medical advice, please consider getting an appointment at your doctor of trust. If you want to give me any kind of feedback on this podcast, feel free to email me at podcast at sleeptrust.eu. I hope you tune in again next week and until then, have a good sleep.